HBCU men's and women's basketball teams played in the NCAA tournament this past weekend. And the outcome of those games did not fall the way that many of the HBCU fans expected of those universities that were looking to cheer their teams on the victory. But there's one thing I can honestly say, and that that is what I heard from head coach Tamika Reed during her post-game presser leads me to believe that a lot of things are going to a lot of things are going in the right direction. Let's get into it. It's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you like, share, and comment on these videos. And don't forget to follow as well. To all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. Please make sure you like, share, and comment, as well as tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not but positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. And guess what, guys? We've got something great that's going to drop in the next couple of days. Uh, this marks our two-year anniversary on YouTube. Do something great for someone out there that could possibly help them in a manner in which is going to be beneficial to some things that they're looking to accomplish in life. So you guys make sure you stick around and check that out as well. But guys, we're going to go ahead and tap on into this video and get straight to what's going on because I know many of you out there like, Coach, we saw the game already. Yeah, they lost and so on and so forth. But you know what? We already know the headlines. The headlines are going to read, LSU escapes, a, you know, LSU survives first round. They didn't say Jackson State, but LSU survives first Let's round. Let's be honest here. The Jackson State Tigers ladies basketball team went out there and they was throwing haymakers in that game. In which they had the opportunity to steal that game away from LSU, letting them know, hey, listen, HBCU teams are formidable, formidable opponents and you got to take them seriously. Because you know what? Coach Reed is going to make sure that she has her young ladies ready and prepared to get out there and go to war with whomever it is that they play against for the full four quarters. But there's one thing that I want to share before I get into that. I want to first give Howard University women's basketball team, as well as Norfolk State and Texas Southern men's basketball team, I want to give them their flowers because they too did make it to the NCAA tournament and things didn't go the way that they expected for them as well. But I got to be honest with you, Jackson State women's basketball team, I'm going to give you flowers right now because all of you guys made it to the tournament letting everybody know, hey, listen, you got to take HBCU teams seriously. Now, one thing that I gathered from watching the men's and women's basketball teams play in the tournament was that they were given the exposure that they that many of these universities were expecting to get. And a lot of times, even with defeat, you're going to get the exposure that you're looking for because now a lot of, a lot of individuals that weren't paying any attention to these HBCUs, colleges, and universities, now they're on their mind like, wait a minute, they made it to the NCAA tournament. Maybe I might want to consider going there. That's a positive in, in that direction. But I'm going to be honest with you. Some things, like I said before, that Coach Reed said really has me saying to myself, things are moving in the right direction. And I'll be honest with you, watching the Jackson State versus LSU game, I can honestly say the Lady Tigers definitely had opportunities to pull off the upset. A couple of miscues and calls here and there that didn't go the, didn't go the way that you know I personally felt they should have went. Yes. Uh, had the ladies in a situation where they ended up, you know, having a scratch, having a scratch and claw their way back into the game after having a lead to get that win. But what Coach Reed said after the game is what caught my uh, last year. You told your team after they lost to Baylor, we will be back here. What was your message after today's game? Today? Uh, honestly, my message after today's game was. We have to continue to fight for our institution, for our conference. We have to continue to fight for our culture. We have to continue to knock on walls to get respect. We not, we're not we knocking on walls. You've accomplished some things that had been accomplished in this program and in this conference. But now it's time to come back and knock the walls down. What Coach Reed said after the game is what caught my attention the most because of what she said and how she said it. And the thing is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, chaos going on out there about, you know, hey, make sure, you know, the, the LSU coach told her, make sure they pay you, make sure she secures the bag. Let me explain one thing to you. And Coach Reed, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn when I say this. Coach Reed is comfortable within her skin and understands her value as far as what's going on. She knows that what she brings to the table commands to be compensated accordingly. And trust me, 
AD Ashley Robinson is going to take care of her. I honestly believe that's going to happen. So we ain't got to sit back and count our pockets. We can just move past that. But let's get to the message that she gave us. When well, she spoke about the culture and saying that we have to continue to fight for our culture. And now it's time for us to come back and kick down the door. Well, excuse me, knock down the door. She said it that way. Me, I'm saying we need to kick them doors in because it's long overdue. If many of you, many of you out there that have attended HBCUs already know your HBCU was established back in the 1800s, some of the 1900s. My HBCU, Morris Brown was founded back in 1881. And having to kick in the door is something that, excuse me, having to knock down the walls is something that we've been doing since then. In which, remember guys, we ended up going to HBCUs because we weren't allowed to go play college sports at these Power 5 PWI universities. We ended up having to go to HBCUs because we weren't allowed to get education at these Power 5 and PWI institutions. So, I, get, I, I clearly understand what she's saying, but you know what? It was the way that the message came across to where Coach Reed had me encouraged to get out here and do more where coach reed had me encouraged to stand back and look at the landscape of everything that's going on and say hey you know what we do need to move in a different direction we do need to put we do need to protect and uplift this culture in the manner in which we're supposed to in which you've heard me deliver that message to you guys over and over again we all got to be accountable changes is, changes is coming within this hbcu landscape regardless if a lot of us want to understand it or not Many of us out here want to see, hey, we need to see more competition on this level. We need to do this. We need to do that. Guys, I'll be honest with you. Going back to the other teams that competed within the tournament, if you look at how those games went, be honest with yourself. They're still building their programs, meaning that they need to have more, uh, more depth as far as on the team. As far as when you're playing one of those Power 5 schools, one of those PWI schools, guess what? When they go ahead, when they substitute out three, they bring in another three that will be started somewhere else. When you bring your three in, your three may not be, they may not can go play on another team and start. They might can go out there and compete, but they're going to have a little more rougher time trying to get, you know, trying to get that W away from the team. And all they go, all those other teams are going to look to do is try to run teams down so that they can't get out there and compete and try to embarrass them. That is what the, that is what, a lot of these teams are doing now within the HBCU landscape, they're now trying to bolster their rosters to make sure that they have players on their team so that when they pull players out the game and they give them time to sit down and catch a spell for them to rest, when they put them other three to five players in the game, guess what? Those other three to five players, they can go out there and compete with the team that's out there on the court, allowing those starters to get their rest so that they can come back out there and get that win. These are the things that they're looking to put together so that they can continue to keep moving the landscape forward. If, it's not always about let's jump out there and play the biggest, baddest team because we got a couple of four or five star recruits coming to the program. I mean, guys, we got to look at every, we got to look at it completely. It's not just, oh, well, you know, so and so got this player to come in, come onto the team. So they should be able to go out there and compete. That's not necessarily so. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. From being a coach, I'm just being honest with you. It don't work that way. Like I said, trust me, I found that out a few times myself where. I took a team to Florida, and guess what? We got popped in the mouth, you know, when it was all said and done, when we played the, the we played top teams, but then we played those top-tier teams that had been together, and those squads was loaded. So we had, the, we had the horses to get out there and run originally, but after you played two games in a day, guess what? Bodies wear down, and you're going to end up, you know, catching that brick, and that's not what you want to do. Now, I can honestly say this. HBCU coach, HBCU programs are beginning to see that they got to do more when it comes to recruiting players into the program. Understand one thing, guys. HBCUs have been getting it out the mud since the beginning of time. And these institutions, they were built for us to get out here and have an opportunity to compete on, you know, compete at some level to make sure that we're still able to showcase our talents and not have to fight the system to try to become a part of something that didn't want us to become a part of it in the beginning, become a part of it in the first place. I'm just kicking facts, guys. I'm not sitting here trying to give you a history lesson. That's not what we own. But what I'm saying to you is this. Um, Coach Coach Reed, I, I, I got to salute Coach Reed because Coach Reed, the message that she put, the message that she gave to the world, let the world know HBCUs are not dirty. Sit down and keep taking this lightly. 
We come to kick your teeth in. We come to make a mark. We come to let you know that we're here to play. We're not just coming in here looking for a check or a handout saying, hey, listen, you know, we, we're going to give you guys this money for coming in here and take this beat down. No, nah, we're coming in here to compete and we're coming in here to whoop your tail. That's what we're looking to do. And I, if, if you was not motivated by what Coach Reed said in that presser, I don't know what to tell you. But, guys, I just want to touch on that because it was something that was special to me. And it just let me, it just fully helped me understand that HBCU sports is moving in the right direction. But, guys, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to go ahead and tap on out of here right now. Leave your comments below and let me know what you think about all of that. Because, to be I honest, to see a few, few more of our teams win Grace games. over at Howard University. She just won her. She just won 100 games over at the university. So, guys, I'm gonna be honest. Hey, listen, these these coaches are doing some phenomenal things. You even got the coach down at Texas Southern. Coach Johnny Jones is doing some great things down at Texas Southern University. Edge men basketball coach over at Norfolk State. Coach Robert Jones is doing some phenomenal things as well. So these coaches are looking to continue to keep building their programs up to keep moving them forward. Guys, it's time for all of the other HBCUs. Hey, dust your shoulders off. Let's stand up strong. Let's continue to keep moving forward. Keep pushing this needle forward. Let these folks know that when you step up in front of an HBCU team, you're going to have to come out here and compete. We just ain't going to lay down and give it to you. You're going to have to come out here and swing for the fences for four quarters to get this W because we're just not handing it over no more. Coach Reed, I appreciate you and all that you do. Thank you again for, those young ladies, for making sure those young ladies were out there prepared and ready to compete on such a high level. Texas State women's basketball team, Lady Tigers, you guys have had one phenomenal season. I know things didn't go the way that you expected them to in the NCAA tournament, but you got to understand one thing here. You got a fan in me. Till next time, be the one and lead.